talks on psychoanalysis shares topics published in the IPA Society journals and Congress debates worldwide, brought to you in the voices of the original authors. We hope this window will allow you to experience the depth and breadth of psychoanalytic thought around the world. This podcast has been created by Gaetano Pellegrini and edited by Gaetano Pellegrini and Andy Cohen. Introduction read by Andy Cohen. To stay informed about the latest podcast releases, please sign up today. In this episode, Dr. Fred Bush will present us the book he recently edited, Dear Candidate, Analysts from Around the World Offer Personal Reflections on Psychoanalytic Training, Education, and the Profession. In this first-of-a-kind book, senior psychoanalysts from around the world offer personal reflections on their own training, what it was like to become a psychoanalyst, and what they would like most to convey to the candidate of today. With 42 personal letters to candidates, this collection helps analysts in training and those recently entering the profession to reflect upon what it means to be a psychoanalytic candidate and enter the profession. Letters tackle the anxieties, ambiguities, complications and pleasures faced in these tasks. From these reflections, the book serves as a guide through this highly personal, complex and meaningful experience and helps readers consider the many different meanings of being a candidate in a psychoanalytic institute. Fred Bush is a training and supervising analyst at the Boston Psychoanalytic Society and Institute. Dr. Bush has published over 70 articles in the psychoanalytic literature and four books primarily on the method and theory of treatment. He has been on numerous editorial boards His work has been translated into 10 languages, and he's been invited to present over 160 papers and clinical workshops nationally and internationally. Dear Candidate was published by Routledge in 2020. This is Fred Bush, editor of a new book I'll be talking to you about in this podcast. The book is called Dear Candidate, Analysts from Around the World Offer Personal Reflections on Psychoanalytic Training, Education, and the Profession. It it has been published by Rutledge uh, in November 2020. First, let me tell you how this book came into existence. In 2018, I wrote to colleagues around the world, asking if they would be interested in joining a book project where everyone would write personal letters to candidates about their psychoanalytic training and joining the profession. All but two of the 44 analysts I contacted agreed to participate. What struck me immediately was the enthusiasm and pleasure they expressed in responding to my invitation. Everyone seemed to agree this was a wonderful idea. The end result was that we had 44 participants from 14 countries in Latin America, Europe, North America, and the Middle East. The idea for the book seemed to come to me spontaneously one evening while having dinner with my psychoanalyst wife, Cordelia schmidt Ellero. Her smile and her words of encouragement that followed led me to believe that such a book might be of value to candidates. In retrospect, I'd been thinking about writing such a book myself for some time. Whenever I had the opportunity to talk with candidates when I gave papers and clinical workshops in different countries, I found they were most interested in my personal reflections on training and the profession. I had thought a lot about these issues, having been involved with numerous discussions of training at the local, national, and international level. I knew that many colleagues had thought deeply about training matters and that it would give candidates a much wider perspective if I invited other analysts to participate. I had no idea what people would write. However, when I started receiving the letters, 
two things became clear. The first was the pleasure that contributors found in reflecting once again about these issues. Secondly, there was a wide variety of views expressed, which meant that candidates might find meaning in different letters. Here is one email I received from a candidate shortly after publication of her book. Dr. Bush, I am a first-year psychoanalytic candidate, and I got the Dear Candidate book. It has been a real delight to read. I feel like it was written for me personally, given I am at the very beginning of my training. The words and wisdom shared in it are reinforcing that I am right where I belong. In times of isolation, and she writes in parentheses, I have never met my cohort in person or set foot at the Institute. This book makes me feel like I belong to something bigger and makes me excited for the journey ahead. Thank you for putting this together. It is much appreciated. Warmly. Stephanie, when I shared this email with the analyst who wrote letters, there was an outpouring of appreciation for what we accomplished, an unanticipated but strongly felt response was that the writers experienced a bond with the other writers in our email exchanges over time. As one writer put it, in these dreary COVID-19 times, your announcement that a book was to be published soon was a heartwarming light. And I appreciate another side effect. Although not all of us know each other personally, we unite in writing our emails of thanks and create an invisible bond forming a small community that optimistically looks into the future of our societies and psychoanalysis. End of that letter. Now about the book. The contributors chose to focus on different aspects of becoming a psychoanalyst. I will present excerpts from some letters that show the range of issues discussed. These first letters zeroed in on the significance and meaningfulness of our field. Kernberg from the United States writes, Not knowing you only permits me to answer some of the many questions you have at this point and to be cautious about unsolicited advice. To begin with, it is well worth to become a psychoanalyst, psychoanalyst at this time when psychoanalysis is widely being questioned and criticized, sometimes with good reason. Psychoanalysis, I believe, is the most profound and comprehensive theory about the functions, structure, development, and pathology of the human mind. Frederick Perlman, also from the United States, writes, we analysts are the only healers I know of whose core purpose is to understand and illuminate rather than to persuade, to help our patients make sense of themselves, to retrieve the lost stories behind their troubles, to restore their sense of coherence and self-worth, and over time to promote their capacity and courage to create their own designs for living. Psychoanalysis is nothing if not a cure of the soul, a cure attained by curiosity, not correctives, by thoughtful insights jointly ascertained, and by kindness conveyed in the currency of empathy, respect, and compassion. In the same spirit, I want to encourage each of you to approach your training with the same respect for your own creativity and autonomy that you strive to bring to your patients. 
your professional selves need to grow and develop in a fashion that is consistent with your own sensibilities and judgment. This takes years, perhaps a lifetime, for our, our ideas keep developing. I remember Martin Bergman on the occasion of his 85th birthday, commenting that he could not retire, retire because, as he said, I am really starting to get good at this. End of Bergman quote. Arthur Leonoff from Canada writes, As much as I have felt the need at various points to reflect on my analytic training, to revisit its valuable teachings, I have also had to work through experiences of disillusionment. I also understand better now why analysts work well into their old age and sometimes through it. There is the excitement in being an analyst, the capacity to help people deeply, to inch them towards deeper changes, to learn what has been previously unknowable, all the while further refining one's analytic capacity that hopefully continues to grow. It is hard for me to imagine giving this up as long as there are patients willing and eager to work with me and profit what we as a group of committed clinicians have to offer. Now here are two excerpts from letters that express the dilemma for supervisors and candidates. This is from Herbert Lass in Germany. I think anxiety is unavoidable in psychoanalytic education. Of course, I was also anxious about how I and my psych psychoanalytic work would be assessed by my supervisors and my fellow candidates. And I was also worried if I could understand my patients well enough. I still have this worry every day. But I would like to distinguish between anxiety as a helpful sign of never being too sure, and anxiety is a fear of disapproval and exclusion. The latter paralyzes one's feelings and thoughts. Roosevelt Casarola from Brazil wrote, The other day you told me euphorically that one of the assessors of your clinical report said, your text is perfect. I have no questions to ask and nothing to add. You were proud and I know that you wanted to share your happiness with me. You found it strange that I didn't seem pleased. And since we have a close relationship, you asked me, what was the matter? I am initiating this dialogue and writing, but I'm sure that we will address this, address this in greater depth when we meet. The perception was correct. I felt affected and ill at ease and was unable at that point in time to put my thoughts into words. I shall explain. A perfect work of psychoanalysis one which doesn't raise any questions or problems, cannot be good work. Flawless analytic sessions and text do not exist. I have encountered situations before where I have thought that the presenter had glossed over their own interventions. This gloss conceals, yet it also reveals. The psychoanalytic trained listener doubts the, tr the truthfulness of the account. End of Casarola's letter. So here we have an important issue about teaching and learning that needs to be resolved between supervisor and candidate. The candidate is inevitably anxious uh, about how he or she will be evaluated. Yet the supervising analyst, in order to help the candidate grow, 
needs to help him or her understand a psychoanalytic approach never encountered before. It is especially challenging for candidates who have had training in psychoanalytic psychotherapy to learn that psychoanalysis is different. As Stefano Bolognini mentally says in his letter, what has remained substantially unchanged, in my opinion, is that analysts are, in fact, the only owners of the keys of the door to the unconscious and the only possible guide for a patient needing deep and stable changes in his or her life. When one is a candidate, it can be daunting to realize, as Eric Marcus from the United States says, Integrating theory and developing your clinical working style are lifelong developments. How, however, it can also be exhilarating to realize that one is on a path of ongoing growth if one allows it. This path has some difficult challenges as well as rewards, as Michael Diamond from the USA writes. What begins in candidacy will hopefully grow into a career-long project to develop your capacity to work with unconscious material and appreciate the life of the psyche. Yet, this will invariably test your ability to tolerate uncertainty, confusion, insecurity, and intense feelings, often in ways that entail considerable vulnerability. Additionally, particularly through helpful supervisory experiences and your personal analysis, you must reckon with your ability to tolerate disappointment, responsibility, and manage narcissistic investment in your work, often in great inner solitude. Despite the intimacy within analytic space, you're unutterably alone in the deepest and most important aspects of our work. Your solitude as an analyst must become an anchor where you can eventually find your way, often amid turbulent and unfamiliar conditions that candidacy can help you learn to accept and even bear with curiosity. One way of maintaining its vitality is, in my opinion, to encourage ourselves to rethink, to question each and every one of its concepts in light of the ethical changes as well as contributions from other disciplines. Some analysts, based upon their long experiences, gave advice to candidates. Elizabeth and Elias de Rojas Burroughs say, when we look back at our professional career in psychoanalysis, firstly as candidates, then as clinicians and training analysts, there are three lessons we feel were formative and critical to us and they wish to pass on to you. One, the value of developing an openness to the different schools of psychoanalytic thought. Two, that a psychoanalyst should always strive to foster his or her own sensibility, and this is something one cultivates. Three, the importance of truly understanding the specificity and uniqueness of psychoanalysis and the psycholytic attitude, perhaps the hardest lesson of all. Claudio Isaac from Brazil says this, a suggestion to you, try to participate in the meetings of your institute and society. Dare to ask questions and make comments at the seminars. Don't accept anything without raising your doubts when it's the case. 
if you think a concept is strange, unjustifiable, or even ridiculous, share your ideas and ask for clarification. Shmuel Ehrlich from Israel gives advice about case selection. The widening scope of psychoanalysis, together with the self-selection of those who elect to come to analysis and are ready to invest in it, have made it difficult to find suitable patients for analysts in terms of what was considered suitable in the past. As a result, I often meet candidates who do what I have come to call heroic treatment of a very difficult patient. While these therapies are often admirable, it is not always clear what the candidate has learned about what psychoanalysis is all about. It is a difficult issue that is also heavily burdened by political overtones, and it is best to take up with one supervisor. I can only wish that at least some of the cases you will see in analysis will be of the more neurotic kind, so you may gain a more balanced view of analysis. Two analysts give their views on being a patient that I found very wise, but may be difficult for a candidate to hear early in their careers. Donald Campbell from England says the following. While becoming a patient is the first step to becoming a psychoanalyst, even when you become a psychoanalyst, you never stop being a patient because you only learn more about what you didn't know. Like being a patient, we analysts will be engaged in our self-analysis through our careers because our patients, and indeed we ourselves, keep us wondering, questioning, trying to understand, and second-guessing ourselves. Being a psychoanalyst is not as easy as it sounds. We analysts tend to be skeptical of early insights and easy answers because we are struck by the power of the unconscious to dominate our consciousness without knowing it. Glenn Sugarman from the USA adds his thoughts about being a patient. He says, it's important that you find an analyst with whom you feel comfortable being brutally honest about the workings of your mind as well as the ways you work with your patients. Unfortunately, this does not always happen in one's training analysis. If it doesn't, seek another analysis when you can. For me, my third analysis, when I was already an established analyst, is the one that truly helped me to know and master my deeper conflicts. As expected, my clinical work improved remarkably. For this reason, my parting words will be to remember Freud's suggestion that we all be reanalyzed periodically. Do not shy away from another analysis if you find you're getting in your own way at any point in your analytic career. Now let me give the last word to our current IPA president, Virginia Unger from Argentina. Just one personal point. I started to attend local, regional, and international scientific meetings early on, and this opened my mind in a way that only recently, in the position that I now occupy in the IPA, I realized was the start of the journey that brought me to where I am today. I don't want to give an idealized picture of my training, however. Again, I say there was a lot of effort and dedication in those years, and time scraped from wherever possible, especially family life. I had excellent teachers, and some not so. I had wonderful supervisors who were as generous as they were demanding. My colleagues said that I chose the most difficult 
ones. But from them, I learned during my clinical experience so much about psychoanalysis. Above all, however, and being faithful to beyond, I learned to experience what is to be dedicated to a task and to have a passion for psychoanalysis. Thank you.